Good evening and welcome to Talking Songs. Um, how are we doing out there today? Um, yeah, what can I say? It's been sunny for a bit and uh, been miserable for other bits. A bit, by, a bit like life in general at the moment, I feel. Um, so, yes, um, well, with me this evening, I have Mr. Dave Broomhead, who will be joining us shortly. Um, <clears throat> so just quickly to um, tell you what's coming up in the over the next couple of weeks. And on the 17th, we've got Alina Lee in the studio. 24th, we've got Nick Steed. He's having a lot of success with his, his new album, apparently. So he's going to come in and chat with us. The week after, a gentleman called Matt Hill, who writes some wonderful songs. Then on the 8th of December, we've got Malaya Blue. Now, Malaya's a great singer, songwriter. Um, I did some work with her a couple of years ago um, when she was over here. And uh, we backed her. And a uh, great voice. And she her. Her album, I think, is about number 30 in the blues charts at the moment. So that'll be good. Um, 15th hasn't been confirmed yet, but the 22nd, we've got our first uh, Canadian contribution from a lady called uh, Carly Thomas, which will be rather exciting, which means we're, we're, not, we're now going out in um, um, England, Wales, um, America, and uh, and Canada. So and, and hopefully soon we shall be doing something with Italy. So... Um, I'm going to start off and do a, a tune for you. Um, playing my new beast. Well, it's not new. I've had it for about a year now. But it seems most of the time it's been sat, sat at home. It doesn't feel like it's been worn in yet. So um, this is called... Just going to be the introduction. This is called Blue Ink. Just the colour of your eyes. I never thought that I was clever No one ever said that I was wise But there's one thing that I know for sure Blue ain't just the color of your eyes you can make me happy in the morning You can make me blue the very same night I don't know what's wrong with you girl But I sure know what is right you can make me oh so happy the highs are as good as you can get you can take me oh so low Leave me with nothing but regret I never thought that I was clever No one ever said that I was wise But there's one thing I know for sure Blue ain't just the color Of your eyes Thank you. 
Sometimes I just want to run away Just run away and hide But something keeps pulling me back to you, girl Something way deep down inside Never thought that I was clever No one ever said that I was wise But there's one thing I know for sure Blue ain't just the color of your eyes Cheating a little bit today, adding the pedal in there. Um, because I've not done that live before with a with a pedal on show. So anyway, that's uh blue in just the colour. And now we are joined by Mr. David Broomhead. Where are you? There you are. Hello. Evening, Dave. How are you doing, hey, mate? I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, 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 yeah. Battling on as usual. Yeah. Um, so Tell us a bit about when did you start? When did you start writing songs? When did you, when did you start playing the guitar? Uh, well, I started playing guitar when I was 12, so right. a long time ago now. Mm. Uh, and I started writing songs pretty quickly after that, to be honest. Um, right. It was, it was, uh, my dad's, my dad's a musician, my dad's a jazz musician. Oh, is he? Um, so I grew up sort of with, yeah. with, with that kind of thing. Um, and I was, I well, as, a of, as a matter of interest, what does your dad play? He's a uh, clarinet, well, he's a reed player, clarinet and sax. Right. Um, he's, uh, he's pretty under, to say the least. Yeah. Um, does, he, was, does he play around this area? Yeah. Yeah, he plays um, all over Manchester. Well, he plays all over the country, really. Yeah. Uh, not as much anymore, obviously. Um, does, he yeah, play, does he play ten? So, sorry to, to uh, divert right. you with this, because I, I used to play in a big band. Right. And um, the it occurred to me before that your surname was familiar, and I'm just wondering whether that's what I've come across. It probably, it probably, it probably is my dad. Yeah, who's uh, he's oh, pretty, cool. pretty well known on the on the circuit, right? Um, but yeah, he's, he was tenor, alto, soprano, right? Uh, wow, cool. Excellent. Um, so it was, it was. Sorry, back to you. <laughs> no, it's all right. No worries. I kind of shepherded down that route for for a while. So I did clarinet when I was uh, when I was younger. Yeah, um, but. You know, being it's one of the, I regret it now. Um, so I've got, you know, rebelling against the folk. Um, <laughs> so the clarinet wasn't for me, and I wanted to play guitar. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of it's constantly, I want, well, I wanted to play drums, in fact, that's what that was my first love. All <laughs> oh, right, um, okay, but there was no way the mum and dad were going to get me a drum kit. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so, um, so, so, so I got a guitar, and it was kind of like, right, you've got to, um, I want an electric guitar. Well, you can't have an electric guitar. You've got to learn acoustic first. Prove that you're right. going to stick with it. Yeah. So I stuck with it and got me electric. And then I started. I started writing quite quickly. Really, it was just right. something that I wanted to wanted to do. So who, who were you listening to at that time? At that time, I was a massive. I was into uh, the Beatles, obviously. Mm. Um, the Hollies were massive. I was a really big fan of the Hollies. Mm. Um, yeah. Early Fleetwood Mac, Pete Green stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I had, you know, as a as a as a young lad in sort of, sort of like the early nineties, I had a pretty good um, background. Yeah, because all, all all that stuff's from thirty years earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. I had. A, I, had I mean, a, I I grew up with that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was you know I was I was I was I was really uncool at school. You know, all my mates were listening to the Happy Mondays and James and all that kind of stuff, and <laughs> I was listening. You know, what you're listening to, Pink, you know, Pink Floyd or, or Fleetwood Mac or whatever. Um, and so I, I didn't really get into the sort of Manchester scene, and obviously it was quite big mm. where where we were. Um, yeah, because I grew up I grew up in Felder, so you know we were surrounded by mm. all of this sort of Manchester scene. Mm. Um, but my dad was very much, oh, it's rubbish that, it's rubbish that, you know, listen to some proper <laughs> music. Um, and so I missed out on the whole Manchester thing till I right. was quite a lot older. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was I remember um, I did uh, we did like a talent show at school. Mm. Um, 
and all my mates were getting up and singing in spiral carpets and things like that and i sang Cassidy and roof orchestra and everyone was like <laughs> everyone was like what's this <laughs> so uh yeah so i had a bit of um a different sort of outlook on music when i was when i was growing up which is mm. served, served me well yeah um, but i missed out on a lot of the uh cool stuff when i was uh, <laughs> I was a, i was a massive elvis fan for years so, right you know all my mates put some music on so i'd stick to my elvis i'm like what are you doing you've <laughs> been dead for years um yeah it's it's quite interesting i just like like the idea of you rebelling against a a, a parent who's a jazz musician yeah <laughs> I mean, there's a certain, there's a, a sort of irony to that somewhere along the line. But it was, it was a, it was a pretty straight laced jazz, jazz musician, to be honest. Um, mm. Listening back to some of his stories um, mm. from the time, uh, mm. he was, he, he was a good lad. He was a good mm. boy, uh, mm -hmm. which you know. But that, nevertheless, that, it wasn't exact, not exactly a mainstream uh, occupation. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's. Uh, I speak to him quite a lot. Um, mm about it about you know the music and he and he could he could have you know done something he could have gone off to mm. america and you know mm. he had offers and whatever um but just went for the steady job and mm. and just does it for a bit of, bit of a laugh now but mm. i always you know when you watch him and you just think you know he's, mm. he, he is an incredible musician mm. um and, and i just so i think what what could have happened if it had just took the risk and you mm. know jetted off to new orleans or whatever so you yeah. never know where we're, no, <laughs> that's great. It's a good story. I like that. So, what are you going to play for us first? Then um, I'm going to play, and this is the first song that I've played for God knows how long. So you'll have to bear with me. Uh, I'm going to play a song called Lucas Lane, which okay. is off our band, our band Broomhead's um, first EP that we released three years okay. ago. Three years ago, in a couple of weeks. Right. Okay. okay. Take it away. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Thank you. 
Great tune. Thank you. Great tune. Thank you. So you say that's um, that's off the first yes. EP yeah. that you did. Yeah. So what, what's the line so, in well, the band? So well, band, we've we've we've, uh, we've disbanded um, now. Um, All right. So uh, we were uh, it was uh, me, um, Mike Weaver, Gareth Daniel, and uh, Ash Chopra. So fantastic drummer. But well, they're all mm. fantastic musicians. I sort of managed mm. to. Flag myself into a brilliant band. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it was, it, as you, as I'm looking through my memories on Facebook at the minute, it's we were we we ended up putting ourselves in a situation where uh, we thought, right, we need to get something recorded, you know, get mm. it done, and we gave ourselves three weeks to record, release, and mm. um, get get the demo out and get the EP mm. out, and we did it. Um, but it was uh, it was a tough a tough three week three weeks trying to do it. Um, yeah. But yeah, good memories doing it. I think this the one, one of the things that's quite interesting that because I think one of the the issues for me is that I mean most of us have got you know our own recording recording gear at, at home um, to to a greater or lesser extent. But at the same time, the the I've done four CDs in the last four years, and one was a live one. But the other three, I've done I've gone into a studio to do them because I quite like the discipline of going in and saying right, I'm going to have to finish this. Yeah. As opposed to if you're working at home, you can be fettling for the next 20 years and never actually finish anything. Yeah. You know, you're fiddling around with it. Oh, it's not, oh. And because you can do so many sort of minuscule variations, you do. Whereas well, I think, if you, if you, go on. I think as well, like when, you, when you're when you in that situation, because I do, I do the same here, mm. um, is you're kind of tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And sometimes you take it too far beyond... What, yes. what, what needs to be done and then you can't get it back to where you wanted it and yeah. you know you, you you end up in this kind of circular battle with trying to get this song finished and I think mm. like you're saying one of the one of the things that I really enjoyed we worked with a guy called Pete Trotton um, mm. over in Rochdale and you know it, there was no it was great working with him but there was no messing it was mm. like right you're a little bit pitchy there and you'd be thinking well there's nothing wrong with that but whatever he said was right <laughs> do you know what I mean and you would think oh, yeah absolutely like, well well actually you're a little bit you're a little bit mm. off there, um, mm. and it's decision. You know, I think that's why you, you pay a producer at the end of the day, don't you? Because yeah, all of yeah. your all of your fancy ideas that you think, well, this, 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 and this, mm. they they can go, nah, nah that's a mm. rubbish. You know, and, and they know <laughs> they know what they're doing. Funnily yeah. enough, which is why you pay them. Um, but it is it's it's a different it's a different way of working, and yeah. you know, I think as a group of lads going in a studio and you know. If we were left to our own devices, you could easily while away hours mucking about yeah. rather than having that. Focus, yeah, let's get, you know, on. That, let's yeah. get on with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I I I, I had a produce on the, the the last album that I did, but before that, I worked with Mark Lewis over in his studio, and Mark's a great engineer, a great musician as well, and it is a, just a joy to work with him because he will he. It, it, it gives you input. You know, yeah. the, the worst thing for me is you go into the studio and you watch the engineer and he's just sat there staring at the screen yeah. like this. But like Mark's locks into it, he's, he's grooving about, you know. And it's 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 a lot to do with the, with the actual vibe you get in the studio. Yeah. You know, the sort of professionalism of it. So you, you did did the band decide to split? Was it a conscious decision or did you? Did yeah. It, I think, well, you know, the the, pro the problem that you have, you know, particularly as we get a bit older, um, mm. careers and, and all mm. that kind of stuff, I think um, you have different priorities, don't you, 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 mm. you, as, you, as, you as you get older. I mean, I love doing music, mm. um, you know, and and I'll always, I'll always do it. I'll always find time. 
Um, mm. I suppose when we were doing the band, mm. um, it, we were getting quite a lot of gigs and we were playing mm. all, you know, all over the place. Mm. Um, and then it was like, right, well, when do we rehearse? Yeah, you know, it was, you know, time from the family. And so, yeah. right, so you've got rehearsals, then we've got this, then we've got that. Mm. Um, and it just, it just takes its toll. And I mean, I'm not the most organized person. Hmm. to say the least and so putting me in charge of four other guys and you know <laughs> um expect it you know and and so when you've got the hat on of, of everything you know the songwriter the manager that you know yes everything else becomes a bit a bit much if you're not pulling in the same direction and i think yeah in a band situation if you want to do something with it mm-hmm. one's got to want a hundred percent yes no i agree with you with um and if they're not then there's that kind of there's a, there's always going to be a fallout from it. I think. There's a tension to it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, I, I mean, you know, originals music isn't exactly you know pulling the big books at the minute and <laughs> or whatever. So you know, I, I mean, Ash was driving from Nantwich. He lived in Nantwich, so driving to Manchester regularly oh, and whatever. Right. It's, it was a big yeah. It was a big draw. Um, yeah. And then for you know the amount of I mean, we, we played some amazing gigs with some mm. great bands and whatever. Mm. Um, but the financial return from it mm. for you know the for, for the, the amount of effort. The amount of effort, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I agree with you. Is um sort of very very diminished returns. Mm. Um so yeah, we just say it, it, it just became, it becomes more and more difficult when when it is that situation. Mm. Um, oh yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. There's uh you know, there's 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 a passion, obviously there's a passion for doing mm. it. Um but is there a value for your passion? Yeah, if that, yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. Oh no, absolutely. Uh, no, I understand that. Yeah, but c- well, coming back to you then, as, as an individual, I mean, presumably, you, I mean, that's what's. Well, it was a year ago when we met, wasn't it? It was two years ago. Last time we played. Sorry, two, sorry, two, two years, years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that so was when we were still we were still doing. So we were doing the festivals and all yeah. that kind of stuff at that point. Mm. Um, and then it was. Probably, but you're still writing. I I am to a point. Um, mm. we, I've got a new project. So me and Mike, the guitarist from, yeah. from the old band, we we started a new project, and uh, we were getting you know we get a bit getting a bit of traction. We had a new single that was just about ready to go, um, yeah. and then lockdown hit, mm. and and it's 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 really frustrating because we've got a, we've got a brilliant new single that's, mm. that's ready to go, but it just needs that little bit of sitting down together. You know, mm. you can't do it over WhatsApp or you know, no, and no. and. You know, it's that, it's that, you know, just that sort of final, that final bits. And it's very different than the stuff we've done before as well. Um, so we're working with um, a guy who's a producer mm. um, and, and a musician again. And his input's been in, invaluable. But right. it's that, it's that thing, because we've, we've kind of gone a bit more down an electronic All right, yeah. kind of slant with it. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's those little bells and whistles that, yeah. he can put on it that we need to do but obviously we can't sit together in a room at this moment in time and yeah uh, and no it's it. uh yeah remote working is not ideal is it no <laughs> for, for, for many things and especially for something like you know it, that is a it is after all a creative process you know yeah so, it, oh, go on sorry what what play, play us another tune play you another tune <laughs> right okay right a, a oh. new one an old one uh, a favorite one whatever <laughs> okay i'll play this I'll play. I'll play this one. This one's uh, one of my favourites. See, the thing is, a lot of the stuff that I've been writing at the minute, I've been writing quite abstract, so mm. it doesn't really lend itself to playing as an acoustic track. If you know what no, I mean. No, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, that. I, bought, I bought myself a big fancy pedal, and I've just been, you know, playing about with all kinds of reverbs and feedbacks and all that kind of stuff. And what, what, sort of, what sort of fancy pedal have you bought? I got the, um, the head rush. All oh, right. Um, which is it's really nice. Um, I don't know how you use half of it, um, but the buttons are a bit bigger for my feet, so I don't keep hitting the wrong pedal now. So I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's. Diff- I got I got feet like a duck. Yeah. And uh, the, the looper I was using tonight, my the it's a uh, it's a TC Ditto, and it's got four buttons on it, and so you've got two separate loops plus a stop, plus a, and uh, invariably. I hit. I want to hit the first one. I managed managed to hit both the first two. Yeah. So then I've got a second loop going, which shouldn't be going. So it's yeah. Oh, so, 
I've, I've done it where I'm rocking out on stage and I'm convinced that I've hit the distortion pedal and I'm playing a riff and it's just little plinky plonky. <laughs> plinky plonky <laughs> so, so I bought one where I definitely know that I've hit the... Uh, yeah, excellent. The um, so this one, this one's a bit of an old one, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's called Tell Me Something I Don't Know. Okay. Though I never knew you You took away my breath Though I never knew you Disregard the rest She was all that I could ask for Something in this world to make things right she was more than what I'd asked for tonight She tell me something I don't know She doesn't matter what it is Just tell me so I know Tell me if the stars fall tonight Would you be here? Here with me She's a dream that you can't have You spend your life just wishing Wishing that you had She whispers secrets in your ear And their secrets You long to share Just tell me something I don't know it Doesn't matter what it is Just tell me so I know Tell me if the stars fall tonight Would you be here? Here with me If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger Kills me not seeing her at all So if it really makes me stronger then I'll fall Just tell me something I don't know Doesn't matter what it is Just tell me so I know Tell me if the stars fall tonight would you be here? So tell me something I don't know Doesn't matter what it is Just tell me so I know Tell me if the stars fall tonight Would you be here? Here with me Excellent, excellent. You got a nice comment in from one one of our viewers. Somebody called. Hang on, where's she? Where's she gone? Karen, uh, you're right, yeah. <laughs> so, is that fab? Is that fab? It's, it's, it, yeah, it's, <laughs> the, it's the message. She's better saying nice things about me. <laughs> it says, just beautiful. Two hearts. That'll do. That's the sort of support you do. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, do, do you have what? What are you? What are you listening to at the moment musically? 
I've gone on a bit of a weird tangent at the minute. Um, I think I've, I mean, I've, I've always been, I, I quite like bleak music. I'm a big fan of that kind of, uh, mm. and, you know, and people be like, well, what are you listening to that for? Um, <laughs> I have, I have my kind of go-tos, my mm. always go-to yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in, in my car tonight. I was listening to Counting Crows. I, I, you know, I'll never, I'll never get tired of listening to them. Right. Um, but recently I've, um, I'm, I'm a massive fan of Tool. I don't know if you know Tool, the metal no, band. No, no. Um, but the singer from them has sort of branched out and done all kinds of things. They had um, a big falling out with Sony. So Tool, have made, they've, they've signed like an eight album deal, but the eight album deals, they're, they're doing like 15 years between albums just because Sony <laughs> have done them over or something. Um, so he's gone off and he's done a couple of bands um, and he's a perfect circle, they were great. But I've just discovered his other little side projects that he, um, I say just discovered, I knew they were there, but I never really mm. listened to him. Um, his new side project called Pussifer, which they set up as basically right. a, par a parody band. Um, <laughs> and as they've, as, they've got, as they've gone on, they've become more and more serious, so to right. speak. Um, but they, they're just this brilliant combination of sort of guitars and electronica and, mm. and Haunting, yeah. I mean, he's, he's my favorite singer in the world, he's got an amazing voice. He, he must be very, he's very busy though. If he's got three projects going, oh. if he's got Tool plus Pussyfoot and the other one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, it was all full circle, did he say? Perfect circle, perfect circle, yeah. Um, I'll make a note of them. They're all massive, they're all massive, they're all big, big bands, right? Um, but you know, I suppose, I mean, I suppose the word genius is banded around a bit easily but this guy I, in my opinion is a, is a certified you know he's not even the stuff that was done as a joke is still mm. unbelievable yeah um, and like his earlier stuff was very kind of you know the alabama three that kind of heavy bluesy right okay yeah I, of, yes I know that kind mean. of feel to it um it's um it's that kind of style and then as they've as they've gone on they've just gone off on a completely different, different tangent standard. yeah um and a band called low row as well um no, who no, are no. canadian i think again that's really yeah. sort of lo-fi guitars and electronics right. so that's interesting is, is is that is that a feasible mix yeah lo-fi lo, lo plus electronica it sounds a bit odd to me but there you go. I, I, I think well i suppose it's the, it's the electronica that's the lo-fi aspects in uh in on it for me it's not it's not overly produced it's just you know oh right okay the kind of 808 drum beats and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff with really nice sort of haunting piano lines and yeah. guitar parts over it it's brilliant it's really funny the whole sort of not the, the idea that people should be sort of nostalgic about electronic equipment is, mm. is kind is kind of weird for me i mean yeah. i i i used to write for um sound on sound magazine occasionally and do reviews for them and stuff and um you know some of the stuff that, that i had at that time like i had one of the original roland sh 101s um which i i i, I sort of at a certain point i thought no i've had enough of electronic stuff i'm gonna so i got shot of it and uh, the, of course they're incredibly sought after now yeah uh, but it's, it's like that going back to that sort of analog rather than the digital sounding um sense sounds yeah yeah, well, it's. I mean, it, it has a place, doesn't it? It definitely has a place. Um, oh yeah. But I think there's a there's a there's a bit of a thing going on within the sort of dance music sort of techno department that you, you mm. snare you snare sound crap, um, and it's like an ongoing joke. You know, the worst thing about this song is the snares. The snares terrible, and and when we've got this breadth of of knowledge, why you know, and all the all of these samples and all of this mm. stuff that we can get, why people sit and try and make their own snare sound mm. when they could just go right. That's a perfect snare. That'll that'll do, you know. And it, and and yes, and and, and utilize well, it, 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 and, it comes back to that whole thing about um, how um, how you can you fettle because you can. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think that there was a guy, um, oh, incredibly successful electronic um, musician keyboard player and he did like the music for uh, Miami Vice and all those sort of things right yeah. and he was a big fan of Oberheim since um, which I, I, I agree with him that and uh, I remember an article about him in, in Sound on Sound magazine sort of like 20 years ago and he was saying that his his songs he, he worked on 
um, he had something like five or six specific sounds. So effectively, he had sounds ma mapped out as if it was an orchestra. And he he created these sounds so that, in, you know, in terms of the frequencies and in, in where it fitted yeah. with, with the other one. So there weren't massive overlaps. If he wanted to mix them all, it wasn't a pro it wasn't problematic. And he said, oh, all my stuff starts from that. Right. Um, and he would, as I say, he was, he was you know, oh, um, Oberheim OBXs and things like that, which are really big, chunky um, synth sounds. And I thought it was quite interesting that he was actually limiting himself in a sense. Mm sort of you know in in the same way that as you say we've got how many different ways can you make a snare drum sound you know yeah well there's a i don't know if, if you've ever seen it there's um there's a, a, a sort of meme going around about this whole thing of i found out that um using a drum machine was mm. cheating so I, I bought myself a drum kit and i and i learned how to record all the drum sounds yeah. and, and, and 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 sequence them that way and then I found out that buying a Bart drum kit was cheating. So what I did was I made it out of wood, and then <laughs> and then and then used real, um, real, 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 real animal skins in order to do. It. But then I found out that buy that buy no, it was buying 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 the skins was was cheating. So I, so I, so I ended up by using real animal skins and stretching them. And then I found out that buying the animal skins was cheating. So I started to uh, so I bred my own I bred my own I bred my own sheep. Oh. So I don't get much music anytime with all the sheep breeding now. <laughs> <laughs> So it's that, it's that thing, you know, you've got all of these tools that yeah. are there that you could just use. And I think sometimes it's that purist, that purist. Oh, purist. Can, well, yeah, I think the, the purist thing for me is that I can remember having this, this discussion, i.e. argument, with a guy out in Italy. And he, um, most of the stuff that he does, he plays on, on Dobro. Yeah. And he said, you know, the, the instruments I've got, they were all made in the 30s and it's the, the original sound. And I'm saying, well, hang on a minute. When Dobros and National Steel Guitars came out, they were cutting edge. Yeah. They were, they were the equivalent of digital guitars or digital keyboards or whatever. And so all you're doing is going back to what they were. So you're not, they weren't traditional at that point. Yeah. You know, it's, it's I can remember being, um, uh, pilloried in a folk club about 30 years ago because i was playing an ovation guitar right so the fact that it had a fiberglass body was yeah yeah the original bowl back one i had still got it actually and uh there was something you know sometimes in, in small clubs you can sit in there and you can hear what people are talking about on the, yeah. on the front row sort of thing and in between numbers is the band had four people in it and the other guys are announcing something and there was this couple sat in front of me and at a certain point the bloke leant over to it to his wife and pointed at me and went bloody woman's guitar <laughs> <laughs> what yeah oh dear Judas. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes yeah yeah well, that was in manchester wasn't it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> free tate hall yeah um do you want to do us another song i can yes um this is another one a bit more lively <laughs> um, uh, this one's again off our, I think it's off our first EP, it might be off the second, I can't remember. Um, this one's called Sweet Now. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Yeah, it's good. I like it. I like it a lot. You've got very strong hook lines. Do you think? In your songs. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's that they um they, they have a uh can I say they they, they they resolve really strongly into into the choruses. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 I really like them. Yeah, cool. So what what is you've got uh, you've got a single coming out. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. If we ever get out of this uh get out of this alive, as they say. Um so so what's I mean I, I'm I'm interested in the idea of releasing singles. Yeah, because it, it's kind of um, um, I, I'm, I'm of a, of a, obviously of a different generation, and for me, I have this thing. I, I've asked lots of people this. People my age who, you know, when CD players came along, they never used the shuffle button yeah. because they always bought an album and expected it to hear it in that order. Yeah. Um, which is why it freaks me out now having Spotify on and things come up like <laughs> random. Yeah. But this, the singles, it's quite interesting because, I mean, is there, is there a market for singles? I don't know. I don't, you know, I think for me at the moment, um, I've been, oh, it's not, it's just popped up and said I'm installing something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they have a mind of their own. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it it ties into that, doesn't it? I'm very, I love an album. I love an album. Mm. I'll, I'll quite happily sit down and and I try. I I, I, I was going to say I try often. I don't, I don't. I've become lazy. Um, but I used to be very much physical album. Have a look. Get the get the, the sleeve out. Read yeah. the sleeve and and yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff. I liked the whole album thing. But you know, music shops are getting smaller and smaller. You know, mm. it's it's. You've got to really make an effort, haven't you, now, to go out and buy physical music. Mm, yeah. um, and, you know, a lot of bits offline and, and things mm. like that. But I don't. I, I generally don't go shopping as much as I used to. I don't no. find myself in town. I don't find myself in the vicinity of a, of a record shop to do so. Yeah. Um, and do people listen listen to music like, excuse me, like I do? Mm. I don't know. I think if you look at the the sort of singles and album charts they don't have any sort of correlation do they really as much no no I, th uh, I think that's quite an interesting point I mean I remember it was um, it's got to be twenty years ago that I saw a comment by David Byrne who said there is no longer a record shop in Manhattan right <laughs> which is a bit staggering and, yeah, and yeah. also but one of the things for me when I when I first went to live abroad um, I uh, it was it was it was at the I suppose CDs had already come in. I didn't have a big collection of um, of vinyl, but I decided I would sell it all because I, I I I never never I liked having records. But I one of the things for me was that when I sold them is that I just sat down with the, with the guy from the the, the the places buying it off me, and we just went through them. And every one of those albums, 
I knew something about it. I yeah. when I when I bought it, who'd given it to me, um, whether I'd seen the band before I bought the album or bought the album, then gone to see the band, all yeah. those sort of things. And you don't have that with an MP3. No. You know, no. and I mean it's it's the same thing. I mean the other thing is that, you know, when in my twenties, thirties, forties, it between friends, if it was somebody's birthday, you bought them a CD or a book. Yeah. And now you've got like, you know, modern culture is, is more to do with access rather than ownership. And I think I think there is that. It's that it's that ease of access, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and that's I, I, you know, I'm I'm as guilty as anyone. I use, you know, I use Apple, I get my music from Apple Music. Yeah. Um but Apart, you know, if I'm, unless I'm in my car, I'm generally working. If I'm if I'm listening to music, so I will make an effort of listening to an album, yeah. so I can so I can get a feel for it. And I think going back to what you were saying about you mm. knew something about it, I could tell you on cert certain albums, as soon as mm. I hear that first song, mm. everything comes back. It's I remember what yes. day it was. I remember you know, <laughs> I, remember package, the, isn't it? I remember what the weather was like outside. I remember what the smell was like. Yeah. You know, and it just it all comes back. Um, and it's something, you know, if I look through my my CD collection, I could mm. tell you when I bought it, who yeah. I was with, you know, who yeah. I first yeah. listened to it with. Exactly. Um, and I don't think there is as much of that anymore. There's a few. Mm. There's a few. Yeah. I mean, um, Mike got me into uh, a band called Bears Den, who uh, I think you'd really like them if you, mm. if you check them out. Um, and that, again, that'll be... That'll, that'll, I'll just write that down. <laughs> yeah. That, that does ring a bell, actually. They are, they're amazing. But that's another memory that's in there because I remember because it's such a striking, you know, yeah. moment that it's right. I, I first listened to them with Mike, um, mm. and I remember listening to the songs. I remember, I remember the emotional effect and, and that yeah. kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, yeah, definitely. In, on Spotify, it's, mm. I've listened to this. All right, and yeah. and then something else comes in. Or if people haven't paid it, you've got the advert that comes on after it. Or <laughs> you know, <laughs> And it kind of it breaks that aesthetic, doesn't it? It's yeah, absolutely. I think the the other thing is that um, I I saw something recently. It said statistically, most people on if they're not going to a specific song that they they know and like, and say, and if it's if it just crops up on Spotify, the average length of, of time people listen to it is like eight seconds yeah. before they make a decision on it. Yeah. Um, which is a bit scary, really. And there's a lot of that <laughs> as well with um, how Spotify works as well. If people are only listening to it for that amount of time, it's not necessarily mm. in their algorithm. It's not mm. classed as a listen, and so therefore isn't bumped up onto yes. other people's listening. So it's yeah. all it's all very naughty and you know clandestine yeah. about the way that they work things. Um, but, like, but like you say, what they class as a listen. Mm. And what generates us to listen towards, you know, chart, you know, not that we're having mm. in the charts or anything like that, mm. but there's all, all kinds of rules around that about they know that people will literally just flick through it. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, and so they don't even pay out on that, on some things as well, dependent on. They pay out sod all anyway, so basically. Well. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it is, um, uh, it's just this idea. Of, I, I mean, I, I have this belief that although we, all of us now, we have more access to music than we ever had before. You know, when I was a kid, you had a record player or a radio and TV, and that was it. And then your Walkman came along, and then the CD Walkman came along, then MP3 plays, and now it comes to it on your phone or whatever. It's all that sort of stuff. But I think, actually, we hear more music, but we don't listen to much. Yeah. No, I'd agree with you on that. I remember, you know, you know when, I was, when I was growing up, when I was, you know, mm. learning guitar and all that kind of mm. stuff, I had a rucksack. And it mm. was full, and I had a, I had like you know the old, the, the, like the leather fold over cassette boxes. All oh, right, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, full, full leather. No, I wasn't posh. It was one of those ones <laughs> from, from Woolworths. Um, but it was, you know, it was about this big, and it was just full of tape. I had about three of them in a bag, so that was, you know, what I'd carry around me at all times. And I get on the bus and pull out my record. I was like, all right, I'll have a bit. But, <laughs> do, do you know you, you had to make an effort to listen to it? Absolutely, it was, yeah. Yeah, or do I just turn it over again and you know that yeah. that, that kind of thing <laughs> rather than oh, well skip that skip that skip that some of my mm. pop-up that I like eventually yes and I think, exactly I, I think you valued your music a lot more um, I think also yeah because because there was a lot less of it as well I think because the, the technology has also changed how we produce music mm. and I mean it used to be um 
you know that you if you're gonna if you're gonna produce your own music at one point you used to have to go into a studio and then get discs pressed yeah or then it was cassettes but but gradually it's become easier and easier and easier and now you know we we could end this discussion tonight and you could sit down there i could sit down here we could record something we could have it on air before midnight yeah if we, if we yeah. didn't fettle with it too much and I think, um, you know, we wouldn't have to go through any sort of lengthy process. As a result, is we're 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 barraged with it. And I think I think that's that's a, that's another issue. There's um because I used to DJ as well back in the day, right. um, and there's a there's a track that that was that I played on one of my mixes, mm. and it talks about that. It talks about the sort of dance music scene. It mm. said the, the thing is, back in like you know the, the late eighties, nineties, yeah. early two thousands, um. If you got something on vinyl, mm. you knew it was going to be good. Mm. You knew it was going to be good because they didn't take the risk of yeah. expenditure without yeah. it being a decent track. Whereas yeah. now anybody can, you know, you can play digital, you know, you can DJ digitally and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that's coming out is it's, there's no filter. There's, there, there, was isn't, no, there wasn't much filter, no. Yeah. So what um, you're saying really is there was a cost filter. Yeah. You know, unless you were loaded, you you had to be convinced that you knew you were doing something right if you're going to actually have it pressed. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. Um, and you know, I'm not saying that you know our, our stuff would be you know signed up by whoever, but I think mm. that it's it's the, the gatekeepers disappeared now, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's 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 the key issue. Is you yeah. know we've we've self self released everything and it's out yeah. there and anybody in the world can go and listen to it. Whereas before there was that gatekeeper, and that gatekeeper had to take his money at the end of the day, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So that's why I, you know, I'm kind of yeah, agreeing with you. I'm, I'm agreeing yeah. with you. Yeah, I know. I see exactly what you mean. I mean, it's it's weird because the, the not the live album that I've just done, but the the, the album I did before that, um, um, it, it, I found it was getting quite a lot of airplay in Warsaw, hmm? in uh, Cape Town, and Ohio. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Explain that to me. Weird, weird pockets all over the world. Yeah, yourself, yeah. yeah. It's, it's weird. Uh, it's a funny old world. And I think I think that's 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 probably the most enjoyable thing for me, looking at the stats and going, oh well, I'm going. I've not done anything over there, so that's somehow trickled yeah. through some algorithm somewhere, and someone's listening. And going, oh, I like that. Yeah, and you know, you're kind of big in Japan or whatever without even realizing. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, a couple of years ago, we we went to the states and. Um, we went to Franklin, which is just outside um, Nashville. For uh, somebody told me about this really good bar to go there, and um, it was it was Sam. You know, do you, do you remember maybe Frank? Yes, yes. That, well, well, their song "Semaphore" is one of my most favourite songs <laughs> in the world ever. Well, they'd because you know Josh has moved out there now. No. Yeah, he's, no. he's he lived. He, he Last married time somebody. Maybe Frank was. <sighs> Four years ago, I think. Oh they, right, they, they split up, didn't they? They stopped. They stopped. Yes, playing. yeah. So, well, what 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 happened was that we they'd been out there in the states about two weeks before we had, um, because um, I think Sam's got relatives out there, so he was sending me stuff and saying, "Well, if you're going to go somewhere, blah 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 blah, you must check this place out." So he, he sent us to this tiny little place, Frankly, and. Um, um, it's something we've got into a long involved story here. but we went into this bar um, and I, I played there sat in with a house band it was great fun but the, the guy who owned it said to me um, um, so where, where did you do I said I, Manchester I'm, I'm not going to say Cheadle he wouldn't know it. so I say Manchester and he said um, oh do you know the Inca Babies and I said well actually Harry Stafford who you, you probably know Harry yeah. was the cable player now the Inga Babies were, weren't exactly a globally successful band mm. and there's this guy in this tiny little bar in the middle of Franklin and said oh yeah big fan of the Inga Babies oh, what the hell is that about nice. um, yeah it's a weird world mate it's, a weird the power, world. it's the power of music though isn't it yeah gets you everywhere yeah it is in fact, there was another time we went into a bar. Then a guy said, "Oh, do you know such and such a person?" And it was somebody that I knew from the open mic site, open mic circuit in Manchester. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, listen, um, we could sit, we could sit here and chat all night, but um, we should wind it up. But would you like to do one more song for us? That I can great. do one more song. I probably should have done "Sweet Denial" first, uh, last. Sorry, because um, I'm going to end on a bit of a, a bit of a slower one now. Um, but it's one of my favourites, so. <coughs> but I do have to do tune my guitar, so I do apologise. That's all right. Mm. 
It's where he snaps and whips me in the eye. <laughs> okay, this one's called Who Are You? Cool. Oh, start again. Lovely, lovely. We've got another message for you here from Dennis yes. Serge. It says, whoa, sweet denial. <laughs> and then it goes, ooh, sweet denial. So he's clearly enjoying that one. And another one from Karen saying, I love this song from Rose. Oh, <laughs> that's good. So Rose, <laughs> Rose is one of our little ones. Ah, right. Okay, keeping in the family. Nice yeah. one. Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk and, to you, mate. Yeah, it's been good, man. So a absolute pleasure. So um, and hopefully when um, all this all this is behind us, we'll actually meet in person again and have a chat and a beer and, and maybe a beer, play yeah. a bit of music. Yeah. Sounds like, sounds like heaven that mate. 
Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. The little things in life seem very appealing at the moment. Exactly. So, thanks again, mate. No problem. It's been a pleasure. See you again soon. Cheers. Bye bye. Ah, that was great. That was a good that day, was, that, right? that was uh that was brilliant. Um Nice guy, nice song, great songs, in fact. Very impressed. So um, that's it from me for this week. Um, just one thing: if if you if you do like what you hear, then then do do like us on um, on Facebook and maybe join the group as well, so we can keep you informed as to what's going on. And just one other tip: this is something that I heard on Radio Four last week. Um, Don Black, the great lyricist, um, has published a book called "The Sanest Man in the Room." Now it's been on. It'll be on BBC Sounds. You can hear it on there. I listened to the first three, and they were brilliant. Really, really funny. And in fact, I stopped listening to them because I'm going to buy the book. Um, but I do recommend it. Um, he tells a wonderful story about going to see Liberace in Las Vegas, and he, he goes with Tom Jones, and, and Tom Jones persuades him to go because he said, I, "I don't really want to go. This I've been invited by Liberace, but you know." Um, I should really go. And he says, all right. And so, so the two of them go off and they go to see Liberace and they're sat in the audience and uh, Liberace says, oh, and I've, I'd like to rec introduce you to my good friends in the audience. So the spotlight falls on the two of them and it's Tom Jones and, and Don Black saying, oh, thank you. Thank you. Dad. So Liberace does his con concert and after about a, a certain amount of time, Tom Jones turns to Don Black and says, oh, I've had enough of this. Should we go to the bar? So they sneak off to the bar and they decide they'd better go back, you know, for the encore. So you go back to the encore and just about to retake their seats and enjoy the encore when they hear Liberace's voice saying, and just, can you please give a big warm hand for my two good friends here? And the, the spotlight falls on these two empty seats. Oh, great. I love it. Good piece of embarrassment. So that's it for me for tonight. So look after yourselves, stay safe, and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.